Good morning, everyone. My name is Xiaoli Aitian. I'm an Associate Professor of Agricultural Economics at the University of Idaho, and also the Idaho Wheat Commission Endowed Chair in Commodity Risk Management. Today, I will bring you an update and outlook of input costs. As we look back, the input market in 2022 has been very turbulent with prices for almost every input going through tremendous volatility. This turbulence is shaped mostly by four key events. The biggest one is the Russia and Ukraine war. The economic damage from the conflict is huge. The second key event is inflation. We saw the price of virtually everything goes up and to afford buying these things, which also goes up. And this affects the cost of production and also the wage of agricultural workers. Now, the third big event is our old friend, COVID-19, that still lingers around. COVID-19 continues to disrupt the supply chain because of worker shortage. Many places are struggling to fill jobs. And this understaffing problem is causing um, significant problems in the global supply chain. Finally, we've seen a lot of discussion about economic recession. A recent projection in a forecast that the US economy will grow by only around 0.1% you know, next year. So the Wall Street Journal survey finds that economists now believe there's a 63% chance of recession in the next year or two. So these four key events have largely shaped the input market in 2022, and they will continue to do so in 2023. So to some extent, what these four events play out next year will determine the price trend for many of the inputs used in ag production. So let's first take a look at the energy market. The plot here shows the crude oil price for the past five years, as well as the price forecast for 2023 made by the US Energy Information Administration, or EIA, and futures trading. Oil price were already rising before the Russian invasion because of econo economic recovery from the pandemic but the war has sent oil prices to a much higher level because Russia is a major oil exporter in the global market. So this chart here shows that Russia accounts for uh, around 12% of the global oil supply and 18% of the natural gas. Europe you know, is the main export destination of Russian oil and gas. So oil price um, in March, you know, went to over $100 per barrel after the war, you know, started. And in April, it went to almost $120, the highest price ever since 2008. In recent months, we have seen prices declining and it's projected to continue going down or slightly, you know, at most slightly increase next year. So the main reason behind the decline is the concern of economic recession. The blue line is the EIA forecast and the green line is the forecast based on future trading. So we can see that oil price is projected to be between $70 and $90 in, uh, per barrel in 2023. So high oil price means that we also have higher gasoline price, which is a refined product of crude oil. Comparing to the price in 2021, gasoline price have went up by more than 50%. In Rocky Mountain, quarter two prices in 2022 averaged around $4.50 per gallon, very similar to the national average level. So as oil prices you know, starts to cooling down, gasoline price also dropped over the summer. And we are likely to see continuing lower prices at the pump in 2023. The US EIA forecast that gasoline prices will be likely around $3.50 um, 
cents per gallon in Rocky Mountain, as well as you know, in the US nationwide. So very similar story goes to diesel, which is also a refined product of oil. So one exception is that although gasoline prices have been going down in recent months, diesel prices remain very high. So one reason is that the demand for diesel was very strong during the harvest season. And diesel is a fuel used for trucks, chains, barges, and farm equipment. However, as the demand um, cools down, we will see a large drop in diesel price throughout um, the United States. And the US EIA you know, forecast that the average diesel price will be between $4 and $5 per gallon in 2023. So another energy market that closely linked to ag production is natural gas, which is used to produce nitrogen fertilizer and is also linked to our heating and electricity bills. Russia is a big producer of natural gas and also the main gas exporter to Europe. So soon after the invasion, natural gas prices you know, skyrocketed and in the summer, it reached um, more than you know, $8 per million BTU. So the last time we see prices at this level is more than a decade ago in 2008. But with the supply um, situation you know, um, becomes better, we're likely to see lower natural gas prices in 2023. So the EIA forecast that natural gas prices at Henry Hub, which is the benchmark location for US natural gas, will be around $5 per million BTU next year. Um, however, there's a lot of uncertainty. So weather condition this winter will play a huge role. And also the hurricane season, which you know, has disrupted transportation in the past, will also be an important factor. And the prediction from futures market and also from EI is that overall natural gas will price will go down, but there will be a lot of uncertainty because you never know how cold this winter will be. So natural gas prices directly affects electricity price because um, most of the electricity in the US is now produced using natural gas. We, are, we already saw higher electricity bills you know, this past year, and it is projected that in 2023, electricity price will slightly increase or remain at a similar level compared to um, 2022. So beyond the energy market, another agriculture input market heavily affected by Russian invasion is fertilizer. Russia and also Belarus, um, which is you know, Russia's close ally, a major fertilizer producers. So Russia is a um, is the number four producer of nitrogen fertilizer, and also um, um, number uh, number two in terms of potassium production. So combined, Russia and Belarus accounted for over fifteen percent of the total fertilizer production before the war, and the export share from those two countries are much higher because you know most of the. Uh, um, pro domestic production in the two countries are used for export. So since the war, the sanction on Russia and Belarus caused a global shortage on fertilizers. So fertilizer prices were already going up before the war because of strong demand, but the sanction on Russia and Belarus exports had made the things much worse. The chart here shows the fertilizer prices in the US Midwest where we have access to data. I was also able to get a few data points for um, potash prices in the Pacific Northwest, which is the gold line on the chart. As can be seen, all fertilizer prices more than doubled earlier this year compared to last year's price. So beyond the Russian invasion, several other factors contribute to this high volatile prices, including the um, aftermath of COVID-19 and the resulting supply chain problems, and also the high crop prices, 
that increased the demand for fertilizer and the manufacturing sh um, shutdown in 2021 because of weather issues in the lower Mississippi Delta, which is a major production area of nitrogen fertilizers in the United States. So these high prices have caused difficulties for farmers when making fertilizer decisions. Farmers have you know, concerns about both the availability and price of fertilizers. Um, the good news is that we have seen fertilizer price coming down quite a bit, especially for anhydrous and other nitrogen fertilizers um, since the summer. So the price for DAP and potash has also come down slightly from its peak in the summer. So looking ahead, we're likely to see a slightly lower fertilizer, fertilizer prices in 2023. From the demand side, crop prices have been very high in 2022, and the USDA projects that the marketing year average price for corn would be $6.80 per bushel in 2022, which is the second highest price in the history and only slightly lower than the highest price we have ever had, uh, which is in 2020, uh, 2012, when there was a huge drought in the Midwest. So given the strong corn prices, we are most likely to see you know, strong fertilizer demand in um, 2023. So on the supply side, natural gas prices will be the key factor determining um, nitrogen fertilizer prices. So US typically produce around 85% you know, of the nitrogen fertilizer used domestically, and the remainder comes from imports. So as the US builds nitrogen fertilizer production capacity, we, um, we will likely see the availability issue less of concern in 2023, but there might be you know, weather conditions that can disrupt natural gas or nitrogen production. And there's also the possibility of supply chain issues affecting the transportation of nitrogen from production regions to use areas. And finally, we also, you know, um, how the Russian and Ukraine war plays out will continue affecting the fertilizer market. So with that, we believe that fertilizer prices um, will be likely slightly lower in 2023, but there's, you know, a lot of uncertainty. So um, what are some of the ways that producer can use to manage the fertilizer price risk? So number one, you may want to apply fertilizer at the recommended levels, right? Do not want to over apply. Second, you could also price you know, fertilizers multiple times during the year. Pricing fertilizer at multiple points will you know, reduce the risk of pricing all at its you know, highest point and will you know, lead to an average price that's closer that's closer to the um, average you know, price for the season. So one of the biggest you know, risk when buying high price fertilizer is the risk that crop price may go down. So you can mitigate this risk by you know, selling a portion of the crop with you know, every fertilizer purchase. So similar to fertilizers, chemical prices have also gone up significantly in 2022. So this you know, scarcity of chemicals is mostly driven by shipping backlogs, labor disruptions at the ports, you know, trucking industry and production facilities, and also China's zero COVID policy and increasing environmental regulation because China is a big exporter of chemicals. So going into 2023, as China loosens its COVID policy and production picking up in North America, we will see less shortage and the price of chemicals may drop significantly. So another key economic event this year is the rising inflation in the US. Actually, you know, throughout the world, we see crazy levels of inflation in almost all countries. So the plot here shows the change in consumer price index compared to the same month last year. Um, inflation, you know, hit you know 9.1% um, in the uh, in June 2022, and it has you know decreased somewhat um, 
uh, decreased by a little bit in the third quarter. And in October, which is you know, the latest you know, stats available, the inflation was 7.7%. And this level is comparable to the level of inflation at the beginning of this year. So to fight inflation and get um, price growth under control, the Federal Reserve Bank has you know, gradually increased the interest rate this year. So this is reflected, reflected in the lending rates for agricultural producers. So the chart here you see on the slide is a little bit busy. Um, it shows the average you know, fixed and variable interest rates for farm operating and real estate loans in several Federal Reserve Bank districts. So lending rates for the Pacific Northwest is not publicly available, but they should you know, follow a similar trend as you know, other uh, regions in the US. So as can be seen, the interest rate has been climbing up since the first quarter of this year. And in quarter three, which is the gray you know, bar, so the rate you know, ticked up um, significantly you know, for both operating and real estate loans. So the average rate across you know, all this you know, district is now around 6.5% you know, for farm loans compared to the average in 2021, which is you know, um, below 4.3%. So with the inflation slowing down, we're most likely going to see a slightly lower borrowing cost in 2023. In fact, you know, some preliminary data has shown that the rate is already going down in quarter four of 2022. However, it's unlikely that we will see interest rate going back to the 2021 level. So despite the higher borrowing, borrowing cost, um, the farm real estate values continue to increase, but the um, the ex, um, but the you know the rate of increase has you know cooled down somewhat, right? So in 2022, the average you know, farmland value in the U.S. has increased by 12.4%, um, and in Idaho, the increase is slightly lower, but still um, exceeding 10% in 2022. So compared to our neighboring states, Oregon, Washington, Wyoming, and Utah, Idaho's farmland value is relatively high, but the increase is nowhere near some of the Midwestern states, such as Iowa, where the land value increased by over 20% in 2022. So with higher production um, expenses, you know, a broad range of inflation and also an uptick in financing or borrowing cost. So we will see the value of farmland to grow at a slower pace in 2023, but it will be still at a historically high level. So other than land, another big ticket item is machinery. So supply chain backlogs and a lack of labor have caused you know, shortages in all sectors, especially in manufacturing. Right? So since COVID-19, so the shortage of equipment and the parts have driven machinery prices to record levels. So compared to 2020, before the pandemic, Right, so the price index for machinery increased by um, more than 50% based on the data from the USDA. So with demand likely to decline within the next year or two because of recession, so manufacturers should be able to catch up on their back orders and reestablish the supply chains. So again, the price increase may slow down, but it will not go back to the pre-pandemic level. So we have discussed you know, individual prices. Now let's take a step um, ahead and look at how these price changes affect the total production cost for you know, the key crops. So the chart here shows the na national average cost of production forecast made by the USDA last month. So it includes the average cost of production for 2021 
and the projected cost of production for 2022 and 2023 for corn, wheat, and barley. So we see that the biggest change in inputs over the, these three years are the items we discussed in this presentation. So cost of fertilizer is significantly higher in 2022, but it's projected to go down uh, slightly in 2023. So very similar story goes to chemicals. We will see you know, lower uh, cost for chemicals in um, uh, next year as well. So we see that for all three commodities, the cost of fuel and electricity is quite high in 2022, but it will go down by almost you know, 15% in 2023. So, but interestingly, right, so the interest cost on operating capital is projected to uh, significantly higher in 2022 and also in 2023. So the, uh, so this is most likely because of, you know, Federal Reserve Bank's, you know, rate hikes to, you know, fight inflation. So in fact, based on this projection, so the interest rate expenses will be more than doubling uh, the level um, in 2022 next year. So in general, we see that the total operating cost for the three commodities on average will increase you know, by about 30% this year compared to 2021. But in 2023, it will decrease by between three to five um, three to five um, percent because of lower fertilizer, chemical, fuel, and electricity prices. Now, for the allocated overhead, we can see that the labor costs will likely continue to increase. And the capital recovery of machinery and equipment uh, will slightly go up um, in 2023. And in fact, it went up you know, quite a bit in 2022. So overall, with both operating and allocated overhead, we expect to see similar and perhaps you know, slightly lower total production costs for corn, wheat, and barley in 2023, but the reduction is very minimum. So for the livestock sector, the feed prices have um, also increased tremendously, right? So the chart here shows the uh, US average you know, corn prices over uh, since 2017. So in quarter three of this year, the US corn price averaged at $7.50 per bushel. And this is a level, you know, this level um, is more than doubling the price before the pandemic. So um, the average you know, marketing year uh, um, price for 2022 is projected to be uh, $6.80 and which will be the second highest in history after 2012, where, when there was a huge drought in the Midwest. So going into 2023, with the demand slowing down, we might um, see a slightly you know, lower corn prices. So a similar story goes to hay, and the increase is perhaps more significant. Compared to quarter three in 2021, the price in 2022 quarter three um, for hay increased by over 25%. And the price is, you know, the average price in the US is, you know, um, over $240 per ton. So this is more than 50%, you know, uh, increase compared to the pre-pandemic price. So looking into 2023 with slightly lower demand, we may say, uh, we may see lower hay prices, but again, there's a lot of uncertainty. Right, so um, with that, you know, so there will be, um, so this will be a very challenging, you know, financial situation for small farmers going into 2023 with this, you know, record high inflation and um, uptick in interest rates and the volatile, you know, market and extremely high input cost. But we are seeing signs that, that the market will cool down in 2023. Right, so with that, you know, that is, you know, um, an update on input cost, and I will be happy to answer any questions that you may have.